hurry up intro. It's still not short <laughs> enough. I just want a noise that goes beep, and then like you're on. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like no, we need the the noise for Squid Games when it starts. Wait, what's that? I think it was kind of like one of those like and then yeah. like those siren things. Yeah, I like that. You know, with the doors opening and the red lights flash. That's so cool. Or you can push that big plastic red button and it stops. That's you know? so cool. With machine guns, was that like an first. ASMR thing or whatever it's called? <laughs> for a little bit? Yeah, there you go. Like sipping sipping some Guatemalan coffee. It's fantastic. Thank you, yeah, Guatemala. Amazing. Yeah, we love coffee. To anyone who's in Guatemala listening to this, thank you very much for the coffee. Yeah, hundred percent. Anybody that's that's working on coffee, we'd love to hear. <laughs> yeah, we need a coffee data packet. I, whoa. <laughs> so, uh, what's this about? I don't even know what we're talking data about. Scientist oh, think that they can predict the next January sixth. January sixth was the attack on the Capitol. So this is a Washington Post article. So Washington Post reports on this. It says, for many Americans who witnessed the attack on the Capitol last January 6th, the idea of mobs of people storming a bedrock of democracy was <laughs> unthinkable. They say this mobs? Is, mobs. Mob. Hold on. They were Americans. Mobs? <laughs> and it's the it's they're swarming, the bedrock of democracy. Mm-hmm. The bedrock. There's nothing democratic that happens over there. It's borderline fascist. So <laughs> that's absolutely hysterical. Whoever wrote that? No, no. I like this. Here's the part. Here uh, it says, "For many Americans, witness attack on capitalists. The idea of mobs. So it's like these these people are still Americans. They were maybe like kind of crazy, maybe a little too pissed off. Yeah, you know. But but still they were Americans. still Americans. They were they, they, they weren't. <laughs> and then like you said, the bedrock of democracy. Oh my god, it's just that's classic. <laughs> was unthinkable. Well, I, I, here I'm, this is like a teacher that wrote this. I'm not, like I'm those just, prudish teachers. I'm going to analyze this I'm, right now. I haven't even read the article. I didn't even know we're talking about. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to call the whole shots on this. Ready? Yes. The data scientists mm-hmm. analyzed social media data before the event yes. to get a sentiment analysis of what people were going to do, then cross-reference all their times, their comments, everything that was going on, and can predict the next time there will be social unrest and where it will be. Well, the worst part about it, this is... Was I close? Um, yes, you're close. Thank you. you. You're going to be... The, the Machine learning's involved, which, of course, you would know. Mm-hmm. The methods of machine learning, finding political violence, yeah. you know, insurrection. Um, and they've been working on it, actually, for a few years, even before this. He says, we, we now have the data and the opportunity to pursue a very different path than we did before. Clayton Besaw, uh, he helps run Coopcast, a machine learning-driven program based out of the Uni- University of Central Florida, that depicts the likelihood of coups and electoral violence for dozens of countries each month. That's like a good coup. So, so here, cause the di- here comes the dichotomy, and this is the problem that we have in society right now. What's that, Jason? Is, and I want to kind of go on a tangent on this a little bit, and then we'll get back to the article. <clears throat> you have something that we, we have a technology that's, I would say social media is more powerful than nuclear. Oh, I would say social media is social media is creating hardcore biases Mm -hmm. because the algorithm reinforces the bias. The the algorithm reinforces the bias over and over and over again. It's pursuing this. And I shared this, you know, if you watch police violent videos, Mm -hmm. you're going to think all cops are bad. If you watch amazing things that police do where they help people and save people and you watch, you watch an hour of each. And there was a scientist and he said this, a day scientist, he goes, I was doing this study. He was doing this study where he was looking at one hour of this and one hour. He said, I knew I was in a study and I was still getting emotionally charged. That's unbelievable. Over either way, I was still getting swayed and I knew in my brain, this is how powerful social media, we've given our sovereignty up to this. So you have AI. Now AI can do a lot of amazing things. If you have Neuralink and you have AI, we may be able to have consciousness experiences that are amazing in VR world. You don't even have to uh, actually you may, storm DC. You can no, do it in your mind. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. take your avatar and storm the but bedrock of democracy. Could you imagine if they could get our neurochemical, uh, if they could change the neurochemical in our, in our brains? You can with electro stimulus. Yes, to electro stimulus and then allow us to automatically be in a big delta wave meditation. That we could it, we could put the goggles on, put whatever we the apparatus is on because they have haptic sensory and all that stuff. That. You know, and then next thing you know, boom, within a few seconds. You can meditate for ten minutes, and you're it, you're like completely charged, like you've met it, like you're a monk that's meditated for two hours. So we good. have potential. Technology can be potential. So where are you going with the potential? Then tell me what the you, the, the problem ahead. the problem with this, I think, is it's the human. Yeah, 
We want to blame Facebook. It's we want to. We want to blame the mob. Can I, these days, and we'll get into more of of the cool sh- technology shit with here. But I want to get philo- philosophical with this. If you, okay. I'll say one more thing. There was that comedian that said all he did on YouTube was watch cat videos, mm-hmm. and all that popped up was cute cat videos over and over. That's all he watched, and that's all that popped up. Yeah. So why is all this other crazy shit popping up on our feed? Yeah. He, here. The algorithms are designed to self-reinforce. We, though, as human beings, reinforce our choice to watch. The algorithm is secondary. You can blame the tech, but you've made conscious choices to repetitiously continue to watch these things. Thus, reinforcing that algorithm to feed you things that are even more catalyzing. Bro, it's that simple. It's one thing. The algorithm's all about one thing, engagement. That's it. And you are actually, you're giving it what it wants through your choice. But you are not recognizing the fact that you are reinforcing the negativity or the positivity that comes to you through the reflection of that media, through the consumption of that visual media. It's all you. But we, no one else. In Tarta, we talk about sovereignty and personal responsibility and all these things. But when it comes to something like this, yeah, I mean, th- th- this, this, you know, no one wants this. It happened in Seattle, you know, that where they took over a block. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't, we don't need things like this. We don't need, we don't need coups in, um, you know, wherever it may it's, be. Wherever. It doesn't yeah, matter. Brazil or whatever. Yeah. Or Venezuela is having mm-hmm. their issues. Or Australia has like the most horrendous lockdown known to man. You know, yep. everybody's talking about that. Now in the UK, you got huge thousands and thousands of people are rioting on the streets. I mean, I mean protesting, not rioting. Let me, let me, I made a mistake with that word. Rioting. Actually, people blend those together. Yeah, they do all the time and it's wrong. It's wrong. Because protesting is amazing and it's, it's the freedom yes. that we have. And that's totally. awesome. Rioting is a whole different thing. Totally different animal. Um, See, there I am getting influenced by the people are rioting no. headlines. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, whenever we look at, whenever we look at this Clayton B. Saw mm-hmm. and this coup cast, that's a, it's a great, you know, like T-cast, but coup cast. <laughs> <laughs> he said there's been a ton of sounding alarms that he's seeing in the United States. And, and even even he's that. worried about a military coup. Twenty twenty four. All right. Yeah. Fine. Fuck it. Well, here we go. You ready? So, uh, you and I know a, you and I <laughs> know a large breadth of people, mm-hmm. many different backgrounds. Yes. Military, non military, what have you. Right. What are they all doing right now? They're buying guns. Yes. Tons of them. People that were on the left have asked me, hey, bro, what type of gun should I get? Okay. You know how many times I've got that? There is this underbelly talk going on Mm -hmm. of a new White House, of civil unrest that's going to happen, separations of government within the United States. If you're paying attention... To what these people feel is a reality, mm-hmm. they're self reinforcing that reality in those groups. And if you talk to many different individuals, mm-hmm. there is a great sense here, just in the US alone, that a major coup is gonna happen. Yes. Borderline civil war. Yeah, and, and social media is just the Kindle. That's kindling. just, it's just the Kindling, it's that dry moss. But every time people meet up, they're having conversations. Facebook groups. Yeah. Backdoor trading of arms. All um, that uh, I get, I have somebody that put me on this text thing mm-hmm. with everybody else that sends me all these crazy videos. Crazy stuff. Conspiracy theory videos. And, and it, it's a big text thread. Here's the thing. We know it's crazy and illogical. Right. But the people who are on it, self-reinforcing it, for those mm. others that are self-reinforcing it, that then becomes the reality. It's mm-hmm. the same damn thing. <laughs> that happened in Nazi Germany, where Goebbels like, if the lie is big enough and yes. told enough times, right. it becomes the truth. Yes. So people are feeling this this uh, subcultural agitation, anti governmental movement, and they're actually physically amassing themselves in groups and arming themselves 
and taking to social media to reinforce whatever it is that they want to get done. Yes. That is what this algorithm is predicting. Yeah, and then you add, if you want to add more kindling or more moths, go. you put a pandemic in there. Yeah, so what That's you, like a... Whoosh. And so these groups that are already anti-government... Right. And you put a pandemic in where government authorities are telling people how to operate? Yes. You are poking a bear. <laughs> so, so <laughs> speaking of the bear, here is their design on AI, their model. Because you, you were saying social media. Yeah. So here, here's what they do. They have quantifying variables, of course. A, a country's democratic history. So they take their history mm -hmm. and play. The democratic backsliding. They have that in parentheses, <laughs> backsliding. The economic swings. Yep. Social trust levels, which is what you were talking about. <laughs> in the U.S., you know what we have? Zero of that. <laughs> yes. Zilch. Yeah. Transportation disruptions, weather volatility, and then he says, and others, whatever his others are. So the art of predicting political violence can be more scientific than ever, he says, with data. It's not even, honestly, it doesn't even seem that scientific. Because I'll tell you why. If weather's chaotic. Yes. You feel like your votes are not working for you. Right. And you have a lack of freedom of movement. What the hell do you think is going to happen? But I, I would invite Clayton Besaw from the University of Central Florida. Yeah. Instead of making this huge AI model where you're just passively aggressively trying to figure <laughs> shit out. Yeah. Why don't you just use Tartle? Just use Tartle. It's way cheaper. You don't even have to use the algorithm. No. All you got to do just ask people. is go ask, do you plan on rioting? Mm -hmm. uh, do you hate your government? Do you a love one your to government? Ten. One to ten. How agitated are you with the well, U.S. government? I don't know why they're trying to guess and predict. When you go on Tartle, know for a fact. We ran a study the other day I, I, on asking I people how much if money, they trust their government. I wonder how much money they spent on this. So much. Millions you and millions You can believe the grant? I'll give them a damn grant just to use our data. <laughs> yes. And it'd be like, wow, I was wasting my time. Yeah, so it's funny how, how everybody is into this model of um, but what, what they're worried about, and this is the funny part, because there's certain things you can't predict, like local factors that play into unrest. Yeah. You know, so you don't know if there's somebody that's, if I would have said in 2000 and let's go back to 2008. Oh, I'm charged. How ah, are you? How are ah, we in 2008? Oh, a credit default. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> so 2008, if I'd have said, Hey, um, Texas mm. is going to succeed from the United States. Yeah. Or Donald Trump, the reality star guy, yep. is going to be president. Which would you have predicted to be more reliable? Texas. Of course. Yeah. Because and, and look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, the local factors, you can't predict things. You can't. There's no, there's no predicting. I it's, think Texas is still going to, I mean, if they can figure out a way to do it, they're going to do it. Of course they will. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. If I I'm gonna if I were to chalk off the United States, you're gonna have the Northeast, you're gonna have North Central, you are gonna have all of the West Coast, and you're gonna have Texas, New Mexico, Louisiana, Florida area, all as their own governments. Yes. You can you know how I can tell? The cultures. Mm-hmm. It's all That's it is. All, it's all it is, yeah. It's all the boys South has it. a whole different culture. It's been this way. Texas has their own culture. Yeah. Um, the Midwest has their own culture. Yeah. The West Coast, you culture. know, everybody jokes and calls it the left coast. Mm -hmm. You know, they have their own culture. Northeast, New York and all that has its own it culture. Has its own culture. New York, in a, New York City in and of itself could be a fucking country. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that's this is the point. Um, it's not going to separate on because of weather. Mm -hmm. It's not going to separate because of transportation. Mm -hmm. It's only going to separate... It'll delineate itself on culture and nothing else. Yeah, and, and doing risk assessments like he talks about on electoral violence. Oh my gosh! Is, is this is our is the next breakdown of the United States just to become the states? Um, going to be fueled by social media and memes? Is memes what what broke the dude, camel's back? Dude, people do not realize how powerful memes are. How many memes do you get a week? How many memes do you see? A week. I, How all, many texts they're of, all memes. of memes do you get? They're all memes. How many memes do you make? Send no, out? Yeah, send out. I do all the time. Yeah. We all do. Across Which, all countries. Here's the interesting part about a meme. You remember, you know, everyone's like, a picture's worth a thousand words. Right. What happens when you tell people what the picture is? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Game changer. Yes. 
Okay. And so the, 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 to close this out. Yeah. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah. The algorithm. Because <laughs> he's got, this is a long thing. The Pentagon, the CIA, mm-hmm. and the State Department have been moving into this direction too. To what direction? Wanting this data. Why don't they just buy it off the American public? The State Department in 2020, while everybody's worried about the pandemic, they created a center for, center for analytics. The CIA started to, ha- to hire AI consultants, and the military has a ton of new projects that they're looking at this. You know what that tells me? The government authorities aren't that intelligent <laughs> because they're using AI when you can simply just <laughs> ask somebody what they're going to do. It just tells me that they're just really not ahead of the game. Which is funny. There's this There's this new thing that uh, General Glenn Van Herc uh, came up with. Cool name. Um, with NORAD and, and NORTHCOM. He's a NORAD and NORTHCOM commander. They have models now, AI models and software tools that determine in advance which U.S. actions, this is, you can public, Mm -hmm. which U.S. actions might upset China. (laughs) (laughs) We got to do a whole episode on that. Yeah, we don't, yeah, don't do that. (laughs) So I have, I got a friend, I got a friend in the military, um, mathematician. He spends his days analyzing culturally what's going on in an area to see what the the political unrest will be, to see if it's advantageous for the military to actually move in. So they analyze cultural movements. Mm-hmm. They analyze the weather. They sit there and they look at the math and they run models and they're like, there's a weak point here. Oh, this is a good spot. And they run essentially scenarios on cultural changes all day mm. long. Yes, yes. And they pass the data off and then that's when the generals or what have you are like, okay, here's our plan. This is the best time for us to do this. This is what's going on. The military, data-driven. Politics, data-driven. What I would ask is that people stop predicting shit and start knowing for a fact. Well, this is the last statement, the last paragraph. Go ahead. And we'll end in this because this is funny. He says the advocates that talk about this, this program, but there's enormous unrealized potential to use data for early warning and action. I don't think these tools, this is a quote from him, I don't think these tools are just optional anymore. But he says this, mm. because he doesn't know about Tartle. Yeah. He says it's not perfect, and it can be expensive. Yeah. You know how you make it much cheaper and perfect? Go to Tartle. <laughs>